Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this won't take too long. This will be uploaded in about like 15, 20 minutes or so. So why don't we talk about the SWAC Championship and the FCS second round. We're going to bump these together. Um, didn't include it. Didn't include the SWAC Championship in the other conference championships video because this is an FCS game. Why don't we start with the SWAC Championship first and we'll, we'll get to the second round and some other things that have happened. Um, first off, Prairie View A&M Jackson State. Now, Prairie View, they come into this game having lost three straight. They won the West, 6-2 division record in the West. And with quarterback transfer, Jawan Pass, you know, th I mean, this, this team has been struggling. You don't lose to Mississippi Valley State. Obviously the worst team in FCS, you know, by far. You know, and Mississippi Valley State has steadily improved. They, they have definitely, you know, they're like Kansas. They've definitely improved this year. You know, you don't lose that type of game, Prairie View. And yet they did. They did that anyway. You know, Prairie View has been struggling right now. They had some, they've got some injuries as well that I know of. I know that one of their wide receivers is injured. Um, so, yeah, it looks like it might be an easy path for Jackson State with Dion and Shadur Sanders, you know, trying to finish off the SWAC, you know, at an undefeated uh, season in the SWAC, trying to go to the Celebration Bowl to take on South Carolina State because South Carolina State is waiting for them, for whoever wins this game. And, you know, I mean, this, this passing attack for Jackson State has been lethal this year, just outright lethal. You know, Shadur Sanders has, what, 28 touchdowns, so like five picks this year. Defense, we know the defense for Jackson State has been on point this year as well. So this one's going to be really, really fun, a really fun game on Saturday. We got to address something else in the room regarding our fellow HBCUs, and that was the behavior of Southeast Louisiana fans. It has been reported that there were some racial slurs being hurled at FAMU fans, which is absolutely disrespectful and should not be encouraged at all. That that's pretty damn that's pretty damn terrible if those rumors are indeed true because nobody's coming out about it, nobody's saying anything about it, at least on the administrative sides for both SELA and FAMU. So I, I, again, I, there's been a couple reports about that. You know, but if it is true, if somebody did throw a beer can at a child, breaking that child, you know, out, you know, into like blooding up his nose and whatnot, that's really, really disrespectful. Not a that that's not a good look right there. Not a good look. And I know there's been also been something, you know, with the attendance issue, which I, I did address earlier. Usually I don't pay attention to the first two rounds for a good reason. There, there's a good reason why I don't pay attention to the first two rounds of the FCS playoffs. There's just no, I just don't think, you know, the attendance has been an issue. There were people were listing off, the reputable sources at least for FCS football were listing off the attendance, you know, results and stuff like that. And it was just not good. Not good. We got the Kennesaw State game like 2,700 people there again. Thanksgiving weekend, just not a good time for FCS football. So what do you what do you th what, so big boy sports? You know, you bet you're asking big boy sports. What are you thinking? What do you think here when you say this? I think the FCS field should go back to 16 permanently. In all honesty, um, honestly, the 10 the 10 conference champions, probably 11 or 12 ish soon, and four at largest or however many at largest there are. You know, I just don't think there are 24 deserving teams <laughs> able to win an FCS championship. Secondly, you know, and this goes back, you know, to how, you know, schedules and stuff dictate. I just don't think there's a argument for these first two rounds to just be sitting on ESPN+. Plus. I, I don't, I don't see that. There's not, and this is also, you know, an issue with, major college football in the FBS. I just don't think there are 24 teams in the FCS deserving to win a national championship. Hell, there's an unseeded team we'll be talking about, you know, when we get down to the rest of these games, that is actually, you know, one of the odds-on favorites to win the title. Odds-on odds on favorites to win, the game, win their game this week and win a title. 
So I mean, there's there's usually the, like the top three or four seeds, and then maybe somebody else that has a really strong season, you know. And it's just like it's it's unfair. It's unfair, you know, to say that I think that there are 24 teams that deserve a chance to win the title because we all know there isn't. But I mean, hey, the FCS wants to settle it on the field, so I can commend them for that. So why don't we get into the games now? Why don't we get into the games for the second round? And on Friday, we got Holy Cross taking on the number five seed, the CAA champs, Villanova. Going to be a battle of interesting quarterbacks, Daniel Smith for Villanova. And of course, this Holy Cross team with Matthew Sluka. I mean, this was going, this is always going to be interesting to see, you know, how this game stacks up. You know, a lot of people are going to pick Villanova to win this game. That's pretty obvious. Uh, so I wonder what Holy Cross can do, you know. Nova's not a team, you know, that is no slouch. Holy Cross ain't backing down either because, I mean, again, you know, the uh, very strong Holy Cross unit. So this one's not going to be easy. And none, none of these games for these seeded teams are going to be easy. So it is what it is. Eastern Washington, Montana is going to be one hell of a game. Highlight My other highlighted game here for the second round, you know, including the SWAT Championship, I highlighted that first. But this game right here, I saw this game, you know, I saw the Eastern Washington Montana game back in when it was in like October or September. It was like early October, late September when I first saw these two teams. And I think this is the only FCS game I saw in full this year because thanks, thank you ESPN for actually putting FCS games on TV. We needed that. But this, this was a huge one right here. And, you know, and it's going to be huge again because now Eastern Washington ain't at home. They're, they're, they're going up to Montana. They're going up to face Cam Humphrey and this and this Montana team, you know. So Cam Humphrey, Eric Berrier, they're going to duke it out one more time to see who goes on to the quarterfinals. They're going to duke it out one more good time here. Saturday, though, Saturday's going to be interesting for a lot of reasons, you know. We'll see what Kennesaw State there. We'll see. We'll see what they can do against the SoCon champs, the East Tennessee State Buccaneers. You know, can they? Can can East Tennessee State contain Xavier Shepard? Because I mean, it, it, there, there's there's got to be a way. You got you got to you got to stop the option somehow. And East Tennessee State also has a good couple of backs in Quay Holmes and Jacob Sailors. Quay Holmes is like. I believe he's like second in the FCS in rushing, and Jacob Sailors nearly has a thousand yards himself on the ground. So this one's going to be huge, you know. Going to be a huge day. Going to be a short day for both of these teams. And I bet this game will be under three hours based on the way these two teams play. You know, if they lead on their running games like this. Next one up here is those Southeast Louisiana team. You know that that Southeast Louisiana team that. Going up against James Madison, and we're wondering, can Cole Kelly sling it out against this JMU defense? A lot of people have JMU favored by like 14 points or something like that. It could be a long day for Sela because, I mean, well, JMU's defense is legit. The bigger question for Southeast Louisiana, the Lions, can they contain this attack led by Cole Johnson? No, there's a couple of receivers for JMU that are looking pretty good. Antoine Wells Jr., Chris Thornton, both those guys are very talented. You know, again, I wonder how, you know, a lot of people are kind of, you know, just not really thinking too too good of Southeast Louisiana's defense. But if, if, if they can get something, if they can get something going, you know, to keep the Dukes contained, then it might be an interesting day. It might be a good day for Sela. Incarnate Word goes up against the number one defending national champion Sam Houston with Eric Schmid, you know, coming in leading a dynamic attack for Sam Houston that's just been putting up points. You know, we all know Incarnate Word with Cam Ward can put up points as well. And so the Bearcats under KC Keeler looking to defend their title. And it's, it starts here for them. It starts here for them. A lot of people have them favored to go on all the way. 
either to the semifinals or the championship itself. So Sam Houston has a lot of pressure on them. And incarnate words not going to be easy. So we'll see. We will see how bonkers this game gets. You know, because again, these two teams can score. And then, and, and for at least one more year, I believe, you know, in 2022, they'll they'll be conference buddies. Incarnate word at Sam Houston. So that's going to be interesting too. Southern Illinois taking on the number two team, the number two seed, excuse me, the Missouri Valley Football Conference champ. We all know who this is, North Dakota State. And what's interesting about this is, you know, a lot of people are you know, writing these blogs and articles and stuff like that thinking about the game back in the spring in which Southern Illinois beat North Dakota State back in the spring to snap that 39 game winning streak that they had. Are they thinking, are, are the Bison, do the Bison have, is, is that, is that game, is that game from the spring in the Bison's minds? Is it in there? I don't know. I personally don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But Christian Watson is going to be that guy for North Dakota State to contain. There's also the fullback Hunter Lupke. You know, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. I'm probably not. You know, he's coming back for this game. You know, Christian Watson, I swear he's been at North Dakota State for like seven years, but I mean, I don't know at this point. Uh, a dynamic North Dakota State offense that has evolved from what it once was. Remember, you know, North Dakota State used to be that team that can line up in the eye. They, they pretty much just lined up in the eye all the time run it down your throat type team but they can they can do more things now of course you know they got their quarterback situation resolved and everything like that because remember, remember when Zeb remember when Zeb Nolan was the guy at North Dakota State back in the spring yeah yeah that was crazy um, so South so Southern Illinois not South um, Southern Illinois and they keep the ball away from North Dakota State like it did with South Dakota and the connection between Nick Baker and Avante Cox is going to be a, a combination that looks pretty deadly if they could get it going, you know. Southern Illinois has to, you know, get the drives, keep the drives sustained against North Dakota State. They want to have a chance at this because, again, you know, the SU is a strong, strong team. Again, a lot of people favor them to go all the way as well. So we'll see. We will see. Could it be? Could it be an upset again? We'll find it out. Um, Tennessee Martin taking on Montana State. So the X factor here for the Bobcats is Troy Anderson, one of the best linebackers in the country, probably the best linebacker in FCS. You know, he, he's been a monster on the field this year, probably going to win some awards and stuff like that. But we know that UTM's defense is a physical bunch as well. They took away the ball from Missouri State what six times six interceptions it looks something like that last week you know so this is gonna be a huge huge defensive game of course we can't discredit the offenses but I think this will be a defensive battle in my opinion based on what I've got from my notes because again not a lot of people seem to want to cover FCS football very well or at least to the extent of other college football you know the FBS but it is what it is and the last game here to go over is South Dakota State and Sacramento State. South Dakota State is favored to win this game. Pierre Strong of the Jacks, you know, that they're, they're looking like a team that has gotten hot at the right time. And Sacramento State benefited from, you know, not taking on Eastern Washington, you know, not taking on, you know, um, I think they didn't take on Montana State either. It was either Montana State or Montana that they didn't take on. I can't remember exactly what the schedule was for Sac State. But a unique system they do have with two quarterbacks under head coach Troy Trailer. And this defense, you know, first for the Hornets, they've looked pretty good over the past couple weeks. You know, they've haven't they've allowed, you know, some touchdowns, but there's been there's been like three or four games where they haven't allowed you know more than 10 points so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out and what are your picks because I really don't have any picks you know because I'm gonna and I'm just gonna say that the top seven seeds at South Dakota State are just to be safe are going to advance I'm probably wrong about that though so I'll see you all soon we got 
an update video for the Semper coming and everything like that. So I'll see you guys in about 12 hours or so to talk about you know what the channel is going to be for the Semper. And of course, late Saturday night, I'll do a recap for both the FCS second round and the uh, conference championships in FBS and the SWAC championship as well. Though so that'll be bumped in with the um, second round video. So I'll have my notes for everything ready to go. And yeah, yeah. And as far as FCS football goes, I'll say this right now just so we can get that out of the way, you know, here. I'm going to put that first bowl Saturday up with the semifinals. And I'm going to put the quarterfinals up with the Army Navy game. So, though, again, like I said a couple weeks ago, you know, the. Yeah, or last week, season not a couple weeks ago. So la what I said last week applies, continues to apply here. I'm going to be pairing up some games from the FBS with some of these FCS games, so I don't have to make 77 videos about you know the F trying to separate the FCS and the FBS because I'm here right right now you know things. Things are, are kind of, you know, they kind of need to be separate. But once we get to, you know, the bowl games and stuff like that for FBS, we can start talking, you know, we can start putting all these together and everything like that. So that is what it is there. But that that's just me, you know, getting ready for the update video and stuff like that. So I'll see you all soon in about 12 hours or so for the update video.